Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. As we take a look at Hurricane Earl, it is now Tropical Storm Earl. It moved inland near Belize City uh, last night with uh, maximum sustained winds uh, probably at about 80 to 85 miles an hour. It looked like it intensified a little bit more. And now it's moving its way across. Actually, the center is almost halfway, uh, a, a, well, not quite halfway, but it's uh, moving uh, through northern parts of Honduras and continuing on a course slightly north of due west. You can see how the signature circulation is pretty well intact, but uh, of course now that it's inland, uh, the uh, winds are dropping off, and the main threat is going to be for some extremely heavy rains uh, upwards to a foot or a foot and a half at some of the mountains here as it moves on to the west. Now, the only minor issue is that the center could possibly emerge into the uh, open waters of the uh, Gulf, uh, the Bay of Campeche in the Southwest Gulf. But I just want to show you here that we're talking about a very uh, small area that it might emerge over, like right in here, and then go back inland anyway. So um, it, it probably won't be able to gain much, if any, strength at all. So meanwhile, let's just look real quick at our own weather because we have some changes, uh, a minor interruption really. It's a small change. High pressure is just to our north, so we've got this really nice air mass, nice onshore flow, deep blue skies and sunshine, and then that's going to start to pull out. <clears throat> I think we'll do it one more time on Friday and have a reasonably decent day, even though this is the NAM model and uh, it looks like a little bit of moisture is beginning to build up. But the humidity really won't make a big change until Saturday when we have a cold front that will be coming through, and that front might produce some thunderstorms in the late afternoon and evening. You can see that the dam has a bit of a broken line moving across southern New England, northern and central New Jersey, and back through uh, parts of uh, southeastern Pennsylvania into eastern Maryland and extreme northeastern Virginia. It really doesn't look like all that much in terms of the upper air support, um, plus the fact that um, the air mass we're in now is so dry that it's really not going to have a lot of time to saturate on Saturday. So that'll be the one day where temperatures uh, might get up close to or over 90 in some places, and it may also get rather uncomfortable. But you can see from the upper air that this northern jet stream takes over, and <clears throat> we get with it another shot of dry air. Now, I'm just going to jump real quick to the longer range of what's going to happen next week because that jet, as we've been seeing, will pull out and then a ridge is going to build into the eastern states for the second part of next week so we may get hot for the second half of next week and possibly extending it into next week and a lot is going to depend on what this northern jet stream does and whether it flexes or not and uh, we are seeing a little bit of troughing here that develops on the long range as we go down the road so um, bottom line is that the weather except for that minor interruption uh, that we'll see here on uh, Saturday with this cold front coming through, maybe some afternoon and evening thunderstorms, might even be a morning shower as the atmosphere saturates, and then another dry air mass follows for early next week. So have a great Thursday, and uh, be, sure to, be sure to check out all the latest weather information uh, on uh, SNS Storm Chasers and on meteorologistjochaffee.com.